Welcome to the next video in the evolution unit. This video will be looking at two dot points from the evolution of Australian biota unit 8.5.11. Identify and describe evidence that supports the assertion that Australia was once part of a landmass called Gondwana, including the matching of continental margins, the position of mid ocean ridges, spreading zones between continental plates, fossils in common on Gondwana and continents including Glossopteris and Gagnopteris flora and marsupials and similarities between present-day organisms on Gondwan and continents, as well as dot point 8.5.1a, solve problems to identify the positions of mid-ocean ridges and spreading zones that infer a moving Australian continent. The theory of plate tectonics states that the Earth's crust is divided into several big rigid plates that are made up of continents and ocean bases. These crustal plates move over time relative to one another. The plates can move apart, slide past one another, or collide. Continental drift theory is an important part of plate tectonics. It is now believed that the Earth's continents have not always been in their present positions. The continents were once part of an ancient supercontinent known as Pangaea. Over time, the supercontinent rifted and drifted apart, forming two supercontinents known as Gondwana and Laurasia. Part of the evidence for continental drift theory comes from the study of Gondwana. The supercontinent of Gondwana existed approximately between 500 and 200 million years ago and included Antarctica, South America, Africa, Madagascar, Australia, New Zealand, New Guinea, Arabia and the Indian subcontinent. So we need to have a look at evidence that shows that Australia was once part of Gondwana. So the, per the first piece of evidence that we need to look at from the syllabus is the matching of continental margins. Evidence of rifting and drifting comes from the ways the continents once fitted together and the continuity of rocks between their opposite edges. The geometric fit can be seen between South America and Africa. You can see the pieces fit together almost like a jigsaw puzzle. Australia was on one edge of this supercontinent of Gondwana and the continental margin of Australia fits with India and Antarctica. We can see here that this is what the modern day continents, the outlines of the modern day continents look like when they were all joined together as the great southern continent of Gondwana. So you can see the outline of each of them and over time through the processes of erosion uh, those edges that look like they were once there have now disappeared or due to the uh, sorry rising of the sea levels as well. The next thing we need to look at is the position of mid-ocean ridges. Mid-ocean ridges form the boundaries of the Earth's crustal plates where the plates move apart. The crust move because lava, which is the hot molten rock beneath the crust of the Earth, is added to these ridges. Active volcanoes and shallow earthquakes also occur at these ridges. Australia moved away from Antarctica because of the southeastern, sorry, the, the southeast Indian Ridge and the Pacific Antarctic Ridge. The Mid-Atlantic Ridge is what caused the separation between Africa and South America. So if we have a look here, we have the Pacific Antarctic Ridge, which is what has caused the separation between Australia and Antarctica, as well as the Southwest Indian Ridge here. Okay, we can also see right down the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, this perfect ridge shape, or this perfect outline of what is known as the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. And so this would be pretty much running right along the boundary between two major tectonic plates. The next piece of evidence is the spreading zones between continental plates. Seafloor spreading is closely associated with the mid-ocean ridges. Seafloor spreading occurs when two crustal plates move apart. Hot, mol hot molten rock material rises into the gap. When this material then cools, it becomes rigid and forms part of the plates on either side of the spreading zone. Dating of rocks around the mid-ocean ridges so shows a progressive increase in age. Very young rocks are found at the ridge and the further away you get from the, the ridge, the older the rocks are. So here we can see rocks number five would be the youngest in this particular case, and rocks number one would be the oldest. So this molten material would push up into the ridge or the, the zone between the two plates and form new rock. And then when that would solidify, continental drift would cause them to separate from one another and new rock would form in between. So what drives this is 
the convection currents beneath the tectonic plate. So this video just shows really nicely how convection currents take place and how they drive the movement of the continental plates. Okay, so we could see here that the movement of this molten rock underneath the surface causes the two plates above that particular area to push apart and then that's what's led to the overall movement of our continents since the beginning of time. The next piece of evidence we need to look at are fossils that are in common on Gondwanan continents. So Glossopteris and Gangmacteris are distinctive plants from the Permian Age. And fossil remains of these plants have been found on all Gondwanan continents and they have not been found on any of the northern continents, so just the southern continents. So this suggests that these continents had to all be once joined together because how could fossils of the same age be found in countries that are separated by hundreds of kilometres of water? The reptiles and amphibians also could not have swum or drifted such distances and fossils of these have also been found on either side of quite vast oceans now. So the dominant features of the flora of Gondwana about 250 million years ago were these Glossopteris and Gammopteris. While aspects of their anatomy are fern-like, they appear to have some features of their venation in common with flowering plants and they do not produce by seeds. These plants are now extinct and fossils have been found in Australia, South America, Africa, India and Antarctica. The platypus was once thought to be unique to Australia. However, fossil evidence from 110 million year old opalized jaws suggests that monotremes, which are egg laying mammals, originated in the Australian Antarctic section of Gondwana. 60 million year old rocks in South America have been found to have fossils of the platypus, suggesting that they migrated from Australia towards South America, where the land masses were joined as part of Gondwana. Fossils of marsupials suggest that they may have originated in Asia and then spread to North America and later migrated to present day South America. This migration eventually took them to Antarctica about 40 million years ago and Australia where 250 million year old fossils have been found. Both land masses were joined as part of the supercontinent Gondwana and it is believed that, be that Africa broke away from the rest of Gondwana before the marsupials were able to get there. So what we can see from this picture here is a range of different fossils that have been found across some or all of the different continents that once were believed to have made up Gondwana. Some of these continents are now separated by thousands of kilometres of water and you could not imagine that in particular here we have a freshwater reptile and Mesosaurus would not be able to swim thousands of kilometres through marine water considering it's a freshwater reptile. So what these fossils have provided evidence for is that if these continents were once joined, there's no reason to say that this reptile couldn't simply have walked from the South American continent to the African continent. And the same with these large um, tri Triassic land reptiles that could have quite simply transversed these areas and walked from one continent to the other. The next piece of evidence is the similarities between present-day organisms on Gondwanan continents. So the flora of southern continents being South America, South Africa, Australia and New Zealand have many features in common. For example, the Myrtaceae family including Eucalyptus, Calistamon, Maluccas are widespread throughout Australia with 50 genera, throughout South America with 27 genera and South, Southern Asia. The family Proteaceae, which includes the Banksia, Grevillea and Tilopia, 
are found in New Zealand, South and Central America, Africa, India, Southeast Asia, Oceania, and Australia, and they're not found anywhere in the Northern Hemisphere. The southern beech tree, known as Nothophagus, is, is found only in the temperate lands of the Southern Hemisphere. Again, not found in the Northern Hemisphere, which would provide evidence for the fact that those two land masses separated fairly early on. Flightless birds, which includes the rhea in South America, the ostrich in Africa, the emu and the cassowary in Australia and the kiwi in New Zealand are so similar that it is believed that they descended from a common ancestor. However, DNA evidence has recently brought this into question. The puzzle of the distribution of these flightless birds only on the southern continents, however, can be solved with the idea that there was this existence of a supercontinent. And again, just like the reptiles we mentioned in the previous image, they could have moved by foot from landmass to landmass once they were, when they were all um, still joined. Australian marsupials, including the quolls, hopping mice and Tasmanian devils, have several features in common with South American marsupials, as Gondwana broker, New Zealand, New Caledonia and Australia were for part of a time a common landmass, which meant that these organisms would have been able to quite easily move between those areas. So here we can see images of the flightless birds. As we can see, they're all very similar in structure. Yes, some may be larger, but we can see that they've all, apart from possibly the kiwi, have quite a distinctively long neck, very long legs, and that same sort of shaped body. So the idea of their morphology or their comparative anatomy, we can see that their body structures are very similar, which could take us back to the idea that they all came from a common ancestor that was once part of this Gondwanan supercontinent. And as it broke up, the areas or the, the separate land masses moved to different areas, the environments changed, and the birds adapted to their new environment through processes of natural selection. Here we can also see similarities between the Australian marsupials across the top and marsupials found in South America. So again, very similar in size, shape, um, structure. So, you know, long tails, small ears, sh uh, showing that they had to have some kind of common ancestor however many million years ago when the continent was all joined together. And eventually, once it broke up, as I said, with the birds, they adapted to their new environments. This last picture here shows the position of some mid-ocean ridges or most of the major mid-ocean ridges around the, the world. And at each of these, this is the area where the continent, the continental plates are moving apart from one another and those new that new molten rock is coming up from underneath and forming these ridges deep below the ocean. And that just helps us to have a bit of an idea of the location of some of our major tectonic plates around the world. And that brings us to the end of this video and thank you for watching.